Hello everybody, it's me, your friend Natalie, from Kalamazoo Public Library in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We are reading the Trials of Apollo series, The Hidden Oracle, book one, uh, by Rick Riordan. And when we finished up the other day, we had found out that the uh, the beast, the, the guy with the nasally voice, and the He's a uh, emperor from Rome who's been around for thousands of years, pulling strings, being bad, was actually Emperor Nero. And you might have heard the, um, the phrase, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. He's the one that they're talking about. And what actually happened is that there was a huge, huge fire in Rome, which at the time was a city of like two million people. It was the largest city in the Western world, I believe, at the time. And while people died and lost their homes, Nero stood on his balcony from his palace playing a lyre, which is like a little tiny harp. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awful. So that's the guy we're dealing with. And also turns out he's Meg's stepdad, and he told Meg to get Apollo all the way to the forest, the Grove of Dodona. And so we knew something was going on, but I didn't know it was like this. So I'm a little bit nervous. We're going to read at least one chapter today, if not two, see what's going on. But first, my new friend Karsten. And you can see his little brother Keith in there in the middle. So this is a pretty cool story. On Monday, after I had recorded my video for you guys, I was just at the library, and this very nice woman uh, with her family comes up to me and says, is one of you Natalie? And it turned out that was Karsten's mom. Karsten is from Colorado uh, in this somewhat like Denver area, and they are actually moving to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Now, I don't want to say that it's for me, because dad obviously got a job out here, but I think we all know that I might have influenced their, their situation. So I think it's pretty cool. It was a lot of fun to talk to somebody who's been watching the videos for a long time. Karsten's super awesome, and so is his brother. They played the PS5, got to see the library. Karsten got his library card. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show our picture, and like this is just the highlight of my week. So if any of my other friends want to come in to visit me because you're in the area, that would be great. But very much looking forward to a summer when Karsten does officially move here and he gets to hang out with us for the entire summer. His brother, who actually looks much older, Keaton, is a little bit too young to hang out in the teen room, but he will be here soon. And then finally, contact information. There's my email, there's our Instagram, and for the library as well. Say hello, tell me about your day, how did you find the videos, you know, let, let's hang out, let's talk. Okay, let's read. Chapter 29, Nightmares of Torches, and a man in purple clothes, but that's not the worst. Oh. Oops, I think I'm in the wrong. Oh, yep, I am. So sorry. Chapter 30, actually. Chapter 30, I school McCaffrey. Yo, girl, your stepdad is whack. Why won't she listen? I had never been, or I had been portrayed before. The memories came flooding back to me in a painful tide. Once, my formal girlfriend, Cyrene, took up with Ares just to get back at me. Another time, Artemis shot me in the groin because I was flirting with her hunters. In 1928, Alexander Fleming failed to give me credit for inspiring his discovery of penicillin. I mean, ouch. That stung. But I couldn't remember ever being so wrong about someone as I had been about Meg. Well, at least not since Irving Berlin. Alexander's ragtime band, I remember telling him. You'll never make it big with a corny song like that. Meg, we are friends. My voice sounded petulant, even to myself. How could you do this to me? Meg looked down at her red sneakers, the primary colored shoes of a traitor. I tried to tell you, to warn you. She has a good heart, the Earl smiled. But Apollo, you and Meg have been friends for just a few days, and only because I asked Meg to befriend you. I have been Meg's stepfather, protector and caretaker for years. 
She is a member of the Imperial Household. I stared at my beloved dumpster waif. Yes, somehow over the past week she had become beloved to me. I could not imagine her as Imperial anything, definitely not as part of Nero, Nero's entourage. I risked my life for you, I said in amazement, and that actually means something, because I can die. Nero clapped politely. We're all impressed, Apollo. Now, if you'd open the gates, they've defied me for too long. I tried to glare at Meg, but my heart wasn't in it. I felt too hurt and vulnerable. We gods do not like being vulnerable. Besides, Meg wasn't even looking at me. In a daze, I turned to the oak tree gates. I saw now that their fused trunks were marred from Nero's previous efforts. Chainsaw scars, bird marks, bites from axe blades, even some bullet holes. All these had deeply, uh, had barely chipped the outer bark. The most damaged area was an inch-deep impression in the shape of a human hand, where the wood had bubbled and peeled away. I glanced at the unconscious face of Polly the geyser god, strung up and bound with the five demigods. Nero, what have you done? Oh, a number of things. We found a way to this antechamber weeks ago. The labyrinth has a convenient opening in the Myrmachie's nest. But getting through these gates... You forced the Palicos to help you? I had to restrain myself from throwing my wind chimes at the Emperor. You used a nature spirit to destroy nature? Meg, how can you tolerate this? Peaches growled. For once, I had the feeling that the grain spirit might be in agreement with me. Meg's expression was as closed up as the gates. She stared intently at the bones littering the field. Come now, Nero said. Meg knows there are good nature spirits and bad ones. This geyser god was annoying. He kept asking us to fill out surveys. Besides, he shouldn't have ventured so far from his source of power. He was quite easy to capture. His steam, as you can see, didn't do us much good anyway. And the five demigods, I demanded. Did you use them too? Of course. I didn't play it on luring them here, but every time we attacked the gates, the grove started wailing. I suppose it was calling for help, and the demigods couldn't resist. The first to wander was, it was this one. He pointed to Cecil Markowitz. The last two were your own children, Austin and Kayla, yes? They showed up after we'd forced Polly to steam boil the trees. I guess the Grove was quite nervous about that attempt. We got two Debbie gods for the price of wood. I lost control. I let out a guttural howl and charged the Emperor, intending to wring his hairy excuse for a neck. The Germani would have killed me before I even got that far, but I was saved the indignity. I tripped over a human pelvis and belly surfed through the bones. Apollo! Meg ran toward me. I rolled over and kicked at her like a fussy child. I don't need your help. Don't you understand who your protector is? He's a monster. He's the emperor who... Don't say it, Nero Lord. If you say who fiddled while Rome bird, I will have Vince and Gary flay you for a set of hide armor. You know as well as I do, Apollo. We didn't have fiddles back then. I did not start the great fire of Rome. I struggled to my feet, but you profited from it. Facing Nero, I remembered all the tawdry details of his rule, the extravagance and cruelty that made him so embarrassing to me, his forefather. Nero was that relative you never wanted to invite to Lupercalia dinner. Meg, I said, your stepfather watched as 70% of Rome was destroyed. Tens of thousands died. I was 30 miles away at Antium, Nero snarled. I rushed back to the city and personally led the fire brigades. Only when the fire threatened your palace. Nero rolled his eyes. I can't help it if I survived just arrived just in time to save the most important building. Meg cupped her hands over her ears. Stop arguing, please. I didn't stop. Talking seemed better than my other options, like helping Nero or dying. After the great fire, I told her, instead of rebuilding the houses on Palatine Hill, Nero leveled the neighborhood and built a new palace, the Domus Aurea. Nero got a dreamy look on his face. Ah, yes, the house of gold. It was beautiful, Meg. I had my own lake, 300 rooms, frescoes of gold, mosaics done in pearls and diamonds. I could finally live like a human being. You had the nerve to put a hundred-foot-tall bronze statue in your front lawn, 
I said. A statue of yourself as Sol Apollo, the sun god. In other words, you claimed to be me. Indeed, Nero agreed. Even after I died, the statue lived on. I understand it became famous as the Colossus of Nero. They moved it to the Gladiator's Amphitheater, and everyone began calling the theater after the statue, the Colosseum. Nero puffed up his chest. Yes, the statue was the perfect choice. His tone sounded even more sinister than usual. What are you talking about? I demanded. Huh? Oh, nothing. He checked his watch. A mauve and gold Rolex. The point is, I had style. The people loved me. I shook my head. They turned against you. The people of Rome were sure you'd started the Great Fire, so you scapegoated the Christians. I was aware that this arguing was pointless. If Meg had hidden her true identity all this time, I doubted I could change her mind now. But perhaps I could stay long enough for the cavalry to arrive. If only I had a cavalry. Nero waved dismissively. But the Christians were terrorists, you see. Perhaps they didn't start the fire, but they were causing all sorts of other trouble. I recognized that before anyone else. He fed them to the lions, I told Meg. He burned them as human torches, the way he will burn these six. Meg's face turned green. She gazed at the unconscious prisoners at the stakes. Nero, you wouldn't. They will be released, Nero promised, as long as Apollo cooperates. Meg, you can't trust him, I said. The last time he did this, he strung up Christians all over his backyard and burned them to illuminate his garden party. I was there. I remember the screaming. Meg clutched her, sto her stomach. My dear, don't believe his stories, Nero said. That was just propaganda invented by my enemies. Meg studied the face of Polly, the geyser god. Nero, you didn't say anything about making them into torches. They won't burn, he said, straining to soften his voice. It won't come to that. The beast will not have to act. You see, Meg? I wagged a finger at the emperor. It's never a good sign when someone starts referring to himself in the third person. Zeus used to scold me about that constantly. Vince and Gary stepped forward, their knuckles whitening on their spears. I would be careful, Nero warned. My body are sensitive about insults to the imperial person. Now, as much as I love talking about myself, we're on a schedule. He checked his watch again. You'll open the gates. Then Meg will see if she could use the trees to interpret the future. If so, wonderful. If not, well, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Meg, I said, he's a madman. At her feet, peaches, peaches hissed protectively. Meg's chin quivered. Nero cared about me, Apollo. He gave me a home. He taught me to fight. You said he killed your father. No! She shook her head adamantly, a look of panic in her eyes. No, that's not what I said. The beast killed him. But Nero snorted. Oh, Apollo, you understand so little. Meg's father was weak. She doesn't even remember him. He couldn't protect her. I raised her. I kept her alive. My heart sank even further. I did not understand everything Meg had been through, or what she was feeling now, but I knew Nero. I saw how easily he could have twisted a scared child's understanding of the world. A little girl all alone, yearning for safety and acceptance after her father's murder, even if that acceptance came from her, mother's, her father's killer. Meg, I am so sorry. Another tear traced her cheek. She doesn't need sympathy. Nero's voice turned as hard as bronze. Now, my dear, if you would be so kind, open the gates. If Apollo objects, remind him that he is bound to follow your orders. Meg swallowed. Apollo, don't make it harder. Please, help me open the gates. I shook my head. Not by choice. Then I, I command you. Help me, now. Oh, man. Okay, this is actually a really good place to stop because we've only got a couple of chapters left. So, everybody have a great weekend, and on Monday we'll read the next few chapters.